Hey everybody, Mr. Musselman here with you today. I uh, hope you guys are all staying safe at home and uh, everyone's doing well during the quarantine and social distancing like you guys should. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about some different coping skills you guys can use. I'm pretty sure this is a stressful time for a lot of you guys, maybe parents included. So just wanted to go over a couple of things with you that you guys could use maybe at home, some things you can sit down with your parents and discuss, uh, some things you can work through. So uh, I'm going to share my screen here with you guys. So you can kind of see what we're working on. I found some stuff online here. There's a lot of great resources online, but today we're going to make a make a thing called a, a coping skills toolbox. So what's a coping skills toolbox? I know a lot of us, we've talked about coping skills throughout the year, different things that help us in situations when we're stressed or when we're upset. I'm sure all your different uh, teachers at your different schools have done so with you guys throughout the year. So uh, what is it? A coping skills toolbox is a place that I keep things that calm me down in periods of distress if you have any, everything gathered in one place, it's easier to remember to use your coping skills rather than using negative behavior. So basically what this is gonna to try to do for you guys is get everything consolidated so it's in one spot. So you know when you're feeling that stress, you're feeling that anxiety, you guys have a place to go. You can go get this toolbox per se and then you guys can work on it. So it can be a bag, it can be a box, or just you know a little cubby in your room or just somewhere in your house You know where it always is so you can get some things together. And we're gonna talk a little about what you can put in it. Uh, so some self-soothing items, some things that are going to get you calm down. So comfort yourself through the five senses. I know we talked about that with some different kids as well. Uh, so something you can touch, maybe a stuffed animal, stress ball, something you can put in your hands and feel, manipulate. Uh, something you can hear, maybe you have a MP3 player with some music, maybe you can turn the radio on, it's close by, or you might have something that plays a song that you, you really like, it helps calm you down. Something you can see or watch. So uh, an example here is like a snow globe. So maybe you have a toy or something at home that you really enjoy watching or looking at. If you can sit there and kind of focus your attention on that object rather than on how you're feeling at that time, it will help you to distract yourself, kind of get you more leaning more towards a, a better end of behaviors at the time. Uh, something you can taste, so maybe mints, tea, sour candy, just something to, again, these are all things to kind of help you calm down. So if there's a certain candy you know that kind of helps you or maybe like chew gum, whatever that may be. If you guys can get that, maybe your parents can get it for you or something, we can put that in our box uh, to help us out too. And then something you can smell. So maybe something that has a good fragrance that reminds you of uh, something that you enjoy to do. Maybe something that smells like outside or there's just a certain something that you like to smell, maybe lotions, candles or perfumes, anything like that you guys can use as well. Uh, distractions and different things kind of goes along with self-soothing. Uh, so taking your mind off the problem for a while. I know I try to do this with a lot of you guys, of, of my students, if you if you know, just kind of get you thinking about something other than the stress or anxiety, get you thinking about something that makes you happy, something that, you know, you something you have looked forward to. So example would be a puzzle word, book or artwork, you know, crafts, uh, anything that you can do so where you're focusing on a different topic. Uh, puzzles and books are really good when you guys like to draw pictures, maybe draw your feelings out, that could really help. Uh, positive websites if there's something you guys like to do online maybe play a video game uh, listen to music watch a movie if there's a certain video or certain show you guys like to watch online you guys can do that as well um, moving on here opposite action so if you're feeling sad and you're feeling stressed and uh, anxious you know you want to do something that's going to do the opposite for you so something that's the opposite of your impulse that consists more with a more positive emotion so if you're doing something that's making you upset think about something that's going to make you happy so Affirmation or inspiration, something that makes you feel good. Words of affirmation means uh, things that make you feel good about yourself. Someone says, hey, I really like how you, how you did that today. You know, I'm really proud of you. Uh, you know, things like that your parents might say to you or others might say to you. So looking or drawing motivational statements or images. So this goes back to kind of distraction as well. You guys can draw some things out, write some different things out, or write how you feel. And then something funny or cheering. So when you're down in the dumps, you don't want to keep thinking about or doing something that's going to make you down in the dumps. You want to think about something that's going to make you happy, something that's going to change your emotion at that time. So it may be a funny movie, a TV, or a book, if that's something you like to do or enjoy, that can kind of get you uh, thinking about the opposite of your, of your current negative emotion. So emotional awareness, the tools to identify and express your feelings. So this is just a time where you can kind of sit down and, or you can make a list of things or triggers, as we call them, that cause your negative emotions so if you know there's a certain situation maybe your brother or your sister's at home and they do something you know it always makes you match you know trying to avoid that or writing that down on your list so you know that hey 
whenever this happens or I'm in this situation, I know that I tend to feel negatively or I have some negative emotions. So you can kind of steer away from that situation. So it lets your chart of emotions. So also putting one there though, the different emotions you could feel in a day, you're happy, you got sad, you got upset, distressed, anxious, all these different things is it's good to make a list for those as well. So you can write, write in a journal, how the day is going, how you're feeling, uh, writing, so you know, want some writing supplies in there, maybe some paper, maybe like a tablet, crayons, markers, might be some different things you might put in there as well. And then mindfulness, so tools to, for centering and grounding yourself in the present moment. So meditation, relaxation, recordings, which um, some of you might not have access to that, but that could be just be some music, you know, that really brings you back to center, really calms you down. Uh, grounding objects like a rock or a paperweight. So something that's really heavy, you put something heavy in your hands and it kind of takes that weight off and you're like, oh, I, I'll, I'll feel this weight in my hand and I can manipulate it and you can feel it there. A yoga mat, which might not be possible, but if you have a nice area rug or maybe you have a certain bean bag or something you like to sit on, you can do that. And then just some different breathing exercises, you know, work on five belly breaths, like really focusing on breathing from your belly rather than like trying to breathe a different way. So you really stop and think and focus, take some big deep breaths in, hold it for a couple seconds, and then you exhale out. So a couple different breathing, breathing uh, exercises slows your heart rate down kind of brings you back to center, gets you focused as well. So I'm going to scroll up here to the top and just kind of a picture of some different things you can put in there. So if you see, we have a positive card, a positive card from a supportive person. So maybe your mom or your dad or brothers or sisters, maybe you guys can work on this together too. Maybe they can write you some words of encouragement or some positive phrases you can put in there. So whenever you are feeling upset, you have that in there. Uh, notebook and journal, like I said, you guys want to draw or write how you're feeling protein bar could be that snack could be that taste thing you need that you really like a stuffed animal uh you got your touch your proprioception there uh a soft blanket you know the tea scent of candles something that smells uh words of affirmation a stress ball i know some different things that kids have used in school we have these available i mean if you don't have a stress ball you can use any sort of ball uh or take take some socks and fold them inside each other and squeeze those really hard and you know kind of focuses you on getting your stress and anxiety out into your hands rather than trying to put that out in a negative uh, fashion towards somebody else. Uh, and then just some calming oils, which I, you might not have. Candles, you know, something that smells good, it gets you thinking about a certain situation. Uh, pictures of a loved one or, you know, your family or some different things that makes you happy. Meditation pillow. Then we also have the yoga ball here as well. So, uh, for you guys at home right now, I know this is this is a tough time really not knowing what is going to happen, what's going on. I know as teachers, we're, we're feeling the same thing, and we're, we're not sure what route and things are going right now. So this is something that's good if you have an old shoebox at home or have a bag or just a little cubby somewhere. You might have an old clear plastic painter from... Uh, from like some toys or something. Try to try to get some of these things together. Work with your parents, you know, show them this video. I mean, sure that they'll be on here. Uh, and just get some of these things together to help you through these tough times. I know we're looking forward to getting back to school and seeing you guys. I'm sure you guys are getting eager to get back to you. You know, some work coming out to you. So uh, just work on this at home. Remember, you got the coping skills in there, some different things we've worked on, you know. Set a plan for yourself for the day. Uh, Distract yourself if you know you're getting upset, you know, to kind of distract yourself, think about something else. And we have all the different objects we have here in our uh, in our toolbox for us. So uh, that's our video for this week. I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe out there. Like I said, make sure you guys are using this stuff if you need it. And uh, we'll get back to you guys next week. Uh, have a good rest of your week and a good weekend.